Hi, this is Charlene here with AVID's three column note taking and the gradual release of responsibility for TK through second grade students. So first off, we wanna talk about um, why we take notes and our learning objective. So we want students to take notes and three column notes so that they can um, transfer information from their short-term memory to their long-term memory. And we want uh, this to also be done with our primary students. So the first thing you need to recognize is that three column notes have a specific format um, you can go ahead and have students fold their paper. And if they fold their paper twice, they would essentially have three columns. Um, you can provide them a sheet of paper like this, or you can make this um, model on an anchor chart. When we begin taking the notes, we want to model that our name, our date, the what we're working on, and then we want this to be the main idea for the student's reference. What will the student be using these notes for. And then the three columns, this is just a suggestion, but oftentimes teachers use like topic details and then students connections. How do the students make connections to this content? So when we talk about this, the topic, we want to really reference the gradual release of responsibility and the direct instruction. So this is the teacher's part where they do that I do. So teacher would determine what the topic is. So for this one, we're working on punctuation. And you can see that this is grade level appropriate for anybody in kinder, first, second grade, and possibly even TK. And we would talk about what a period is, and then an exclamation mark and a question mark. So the teacher would identify the topic are the I do for the teacher. So this, these are the details and we would use the gradual release of responsibility and guided instruction. So this is what we would do together. So I would specifically ask my class, uh, class, class, yes, yes. So when would it be, when will we be using a period? And hopefully we would give our students time to collaborate on the carpet and they would say, oh, when I'm telling something or when I'm saying something. And then if I was doing this on an anchor chart, I would randomly call on students and put their information into this details. However, if they have a clipboard and they're on the carpet and they're writing it themselves, I would model it on a smart board under the document camera, and then they would add this information I am telling to their, um, to their second column. And we would do this repeatedly with the exclamation mark and uh, the question mark, and they would give me the second column after they've given, been given time to think independently or uh, collaborate with a partner, and then we're going to go ahead and chart it together, and then students are able to add that to their notes. So then using the gradual release of responsibility in the third column, students will be making connections. And so this is kind of where they do the independent practice. So boys and girls, we've talked about a period. We know that it, we use it in a sentence when they're when we're telling something, go ahead and what's your personal connection? Typically in this column, students like to draw pictures. So they may be drawing what a period looks like. Um, if you have a student who has um, more ability, they might be writing a sentence with the period. So it, this is where the differentiation occurs and where students make sense of their learning. And they make their thinking visible. So is there a third column? And then we can give them an additional time to uh, collaborate and continue to make those connections over time. So this is not something I would do the same day, but maybe I might take it out a day or two later and say, hey, boys and girls, remember those notes that we were working on? Take out the notes or remember the anchor chart that we started? Let's go ahead and refer back to the anchor chart. And now that we know that a period and we see the period in our story, so look at a sentence that has a period. What's a sentence that has a period? And let's add that to our anchor chart or make up a sentence with your partner that has a period and then add that to the anchor chart. So this is where they're working collaboratively. So they could either be working collaboratively whole group or they could be working collaboratively with a table group or partners. So this is typically the question that teachers ask, how do I get students to not copy my work? So giving them those opportunities to think, to pair, 
to share, to have those conversations, and then going back and adding to the notes is essential for students to not just copy what the teacher does. So if um, teachers want to model note taking, they can model the note taking, but modeling should be just that, look at me, I'm doing it. And if teachers are working together with students and we are in the we do phase, but if you want students to make sense of the, of the meaning in their notes and add their own connections, then you really need to give them that that right pair share opportunity or that think right, um, that think collaborate and then whole group and then everybody writes back on their notes. So using a collaborative structure, allowing students to make a sense of their thoughts and to chunk the information is a great way to have them put their own um, thinking onto their notes and allowing them to recall the information for later usage. So that was Charlene with um, three column note taking for our primary kiddos. Uh, this resource is available for you. Um, just go ahead and click on the links and um, check back next month to see what else we'll be providing for AVID and focused note taking. Thanks for watching this episode of the Curriculum Cafe. Click like and subscribe to join the cafe for more classroom tips from the TOA team.